Ah uh, yes, the junk wax era. For many, there is disdain when thinking about the overprinting of this time period in the sports card world. But there is something magical about that time, and we're going to talk about that today. Stick around. What's going on my sports card hobby family? Hope everybody is doing well today. We are here on Memorial Day weekend giving thanks to the fallen here in the United States that have given us all of these amazing opportunities. We have to always be thankful for those that came before that really made the ultimate sacrifice for themselves and their families, unfortunately, so that we can live in a free world. So happy Memorial Day to all of you in the U.S. Big thanks to today's video sponsor, DC Sports 87. You might want to sell on eBay, but you don't want to deal with all the listings and the shipping and the returns and all that stuff. I just ship a lot of my stuff off to DC Sports 87. They run it all for me on auction and easy peasy, get my payments back from them, and it's really pretty simple. So make sure to check out DC Sports 87. All right, a salute to the junk wax era. For me, I was born in 81, so 1987, really through 1994, was the big sports card boom, and I just happened to be 6 to 13. That was right in the range for me to take part in this fantastic hobby where myself and a lot, a lot of the people that have come back in over the last five, six, seven years, they started in a similar fashion. Really, if we look at this time period, it's the 35 to 45-ish year olds that really were around during this boom time, collecting cards, trading cards with their buddies, buying the Beckett magazine, couldn't wait until it came out. And I remember distinctly in 1990 when football and basketball Beckett's came out and it really kind of changed the whole world of football and basketball cards. Up until then, most of the focus was around baseball cards. And I remember going fishing with my dad on Saturday mornings. We'd either be going to the jetty down on Tyndall Air Force Base. That's where my dad was stationed in Panama City, Florida. Or we would go out in the bay. We had a small boat that we had back then that, man, it was it was rough, even in the bay, that, that thing barely made it in the bay, but it was a really fun time. Back a way, way more simple time. We'd go down there to the little shop at by the jetty and get RC Cola, Moon Pies, and packs of Donruss baseball cards. And that's what I would be looking at as we were waiting for hopefully a grouper to bite our line. Although a lot of times, because on the jetty with all the rocks, the grouper would just take the line and take it right underneath the rocks. I would always kind of hunt around and look for kind of weird fish in the water. At the time, I remember thinking, man, this is this is kind of boring. You know, we've been here for about an hour and I'm ready to kind of head back and we'd be out there for four or five hours plus sometimes. But now I think back and I'm just thankful, my God, you know, during a time when you didn't have cell phones and you didn't have texting and the internet on your, like just everything, access, full access on your phone. Hell, I've got my camera right here on my phone. So there's plenty of convenience thanks to the iPhone and thanks to smartphones. But man, there's something to be said for just the quietness and the ability to just think Use your imagination. As a kid, I could just go out with my buddies. We'd go out in the woods, make up games to play, make up different war games in the woods. I mean, there was so much that we could do just on our own. And so, of course, I know a lot of us really enjoy the conveniences of today, but let's not forget about just the, the simple life that used to be and also how great that was too. Because without that time period, without that overprinting junk wax era where there was just so many cards, more cards than there were collectors or people to buy into them. Without that time, we would not have seen this sort of a boom as far as people getting back in to the sports card hobby over the last five, six, seven years. Just would not have happened. Now, maybe some of the older collectors wish that it never did happen, but this group in particular is a nostalgia-filled group. We got the 80s and 90s stuff that just doesn't quit. You know, a lot of these IPs are now just expanding and expanding. A lot of the same movies are being made and remade. There's a new Beetlejuice movie coming out. I just went to go see the Ghostbusters movie, the latest Ghostbusters, where the original Ghostbusters are now kind of like these old guys that are training the younger Ghostbusters. I'm sure there's going to be a Gremlins 3 before we know it. You know, all of the good stuff is being remade, retold, and that is how the world turns these days in entertainment. So what were you hunting for back in those days when you were a kid? I've talked about 89 Pro Set Football, of course, chasing the Oklahoma State Barry Sanders rookies and the Florida State Seminole Deion Sanders rookies and that stuff. 
But there was also, I can distinctly remember opening up Donruss baseball packs and always looking for the Bo Jackson. I remember thinking in my, in my eight-year-old, nine-year-old head, man, the Bo Jackson is such a, an awesome card. That's such a, a cool card. It's a good one. Hang on to that one, the Bo Jackson stuff, because he was just so red hot back then. And I remember always getting kind of like, you know, you get the Cal Ripken Diamond King. It's like, that's awesome. Or Ryan Sandberg. I remember I'd be flipping through. It's like, let it be Bo Jackson. It's another Ryan Sandberg Diamond King. But I distinctly remember just loving those cards. I don't know if it was just the portrait on the Diamond King, such a basic cardboard card. And then of course, you know, going back, there was all the stats and the write-up on each player. Back then, there wasn't the access to all these games. You know, nowadays, it's NFL Sunday Ticket or the NBA All Access or the MLB Ticket or whatever you're buying. You can watch all these games. The only way that you could really figure out kind of where's what and who's doing what a lot of times was on the back of baseball cards. Like, is this guy any good? What's his batting average? Because you did not have, you know, Sports Center on every morning, at, you know, from 1987 to 1994. It was starting to get going but it was still in the early stages of, of TV expanding and cable networks kind of expanding that stuff. I mean, I did not have cable television when I was a kid, three or four channels. I was fortunate that we were able to get Saints games, New Orleans Saints games, sometimes on the you know one of these couple of channels, NBCs or the Fox or CBS or whatever it was coming up on. It's because I was in the panhandle close enough to New Orleans to be able to pick up that game when it did come on. So I was fortunate that a lot of Saints games did come on local TV because otherwise, if I was in another part of the country, might not have been able to watch those. Actually, uh, my dad always jokes that I would go to bed crying because we would always go up in the first half and then blow it in the second half and lose. And I would always flip out and, you know, and just stomp off. So, you know, we've all got our, our junk wax era memories. So from the demographics that watch the channel that's listed that YouTube analytics gives us that, you know, a lot of my audience, like 60, 70% is in the 35 to 45 year old age group. So I know a lot of you can relate to what I'm talking about. Tell me your feel good, nostalgia fueled sports card collecting origin story in the comments section because we all have one and there's always something, kind of a trigger that keeps us in and puts a smile on our face. And especially, look, you know, as we're getting older, we've got more responsibilities. It's important for all of us to just enjoy the little things because damn, life has gotten really complicated, whether it be with added responsibilities or new technologies. I've heard, you know, AI is gonna be taking over everything. Before long, we'll just have robots running the show. So talk to me today about your card collecting origin story. My friends, have an amazing Memorial Day weekend. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.